Phishing emails represent one of the biggest risks to corporate security. And as you can see from this email, it looks fairly legitimate although unwanted. And I went ahead and set up a rule that automatically filters out any of the spam, and I actually pulled this from my junk filter. One of the great things that we can do as administrators is we can go in and look at the hidden code behind any email, and that can help us create new filters and new rules that will keep out phishing emails from getting into our users' mailboxes. So phishing emails, basically what they do is they try to get you to click on a link, download something, do something that will infect the computer, and then it can go ahead and take over your local network and then possibly crypto all the files and holding them for ransom, something we call ransomware. I'm going to take a look at some of the hidden data in this email. So if I go to tags, and I'm in Microsoft Outlook, but there are lots of different applications that can give you this information. And here is the hidden data. Now it's a little bit hard to read, so I went ahead and copied it off to a notepad. And here is that data all blown up. So now we can see that I received the email from this particular location which is because I'm using Exchange Online. So it's pretty normal to see that I received the email from Outlook.com. That doesn't mean the sender sent it from Outlook.com. That just means that it went through Microsoft's Exchange Online servers to get to me. Now, the area that we need to be concerned about is this authentication results. This is where you can create new rules to block spam filter as well as phishing email from getting in our mailboxes. So take a look. There's no sender policy framework. This is one of the things that we use to secure our networks. And SPF is part of a text record that would be in the sender's email DNS records. These records tell us whether or not this came from a legitimate source. Here's another one we don't see. We don't see DKIM, meaning that the message is not signed. A legitimate email is going to be signed by the sender. And this signature is going to be signed based on a legitimate certificate, and it just doesn't have it. We also see that there's no DMARC. We see that the header is missing. All this information really needs to come from a legitimate source. Therefore, you can see it came from nationalcapitalnow.com. The authorization failed. So what it did was it did a reverse lookup to see if that particular domain was active. And if it was, can it send email legitimately from that mail server? And the answer is no, it has failed. Where it actually originated was this en25.com at the address that you see here. So it went from en25.com into my exchange email. And then it was rejected by my exchange email because it didn't pass any of the usual security checks. The IP address you see here is the internal IP address of the email server that it was sent from. Internal IP addresses will always start with either 10 or 172 or 192.168. I'm going to copy the public address it passed through and see and see if I can find its origin. What I'll do is go to Aaron.net. This is the American Registry for Internet Numbers, and I'm going to paste in that IP address and see if it can find its location. And here we can see it came from the Oracle Cloud. So that means it's probably a client of Oracle systems that's hosting the email. It's also possible that Oracle has some sort of security issue and the computer got hacked and turned into a spam mail server from Oracle within. And this happens with a lot of companies because their users click on phishing email and then it inadvertently will automatically create this mail server that will send out email, even if it's just from a Windows client computer. It doesn't even have to be from a server. You can install these mail servers on pretty much any operating system. So the next step would typically be to look for an abuse email. So an abuse at whatever domain at is doing the email hosting and let them know that there's a spammer on their system. However, Oracle does not put out any sort of abuse email, so there's no way to notify them using the normal channels. My particular email was a phishing email, but there's also something called spear phishing. Spear phishing is when you see an email that's targeted to a specific person. This email was blasted out to a lot of people. It's pretty obvious. 
Whereas a spear phishing email, what it will do is it will say it's from a trusted user because they've hacked their address book and it will have personal information in the email that will make it look like it's from a legitimate source. And it will typically want you to enter a password or send money to that particular location. And I've seen many people fooled by this tactic. Phishing attempts require a lot of diligence for email administrators, as changes in security cause hackers to change their procedures to try and infiltrate your organization.